back to the channel, everybody. Hope your weekend was good. I hope your preparation for this race season is going well for you. Hopefully you don't have too many problems. As I've mentioned in other videos, we have Texas 2K that we're getting ready for as a shop. And then that kicks off our season. We're going to have some half mile events shortly after that. Hope to get the Civic back out and doing some stuff this year. Have some minor teething problems, but I think we got it under control. Anyway, we'll have some videos about that car as soon as it's running and on the dyno and doing things. This video, however, is going to kind of follow up a little bit on the EMAP and back pressure video that we did. One of our viewers of that video, Tony E., asked to do some information on turbine housings. I think that's an excellent idea, so I'm going to rush this one out for Tony. I don't have any good comparison as far as back pressure for data that I personally have on hand. I do have a bunch of dyno sheets, though, that really is going to insulate the point about turbine housing selection. So, as you can see, it was time to switch up the background again. Here we have Miles and my car. He got me by, I think, 13 miles an hour in this photo, but it is probably one of the most epic pictures I have of anything I've personally done racing, so hopefully you like it as well. Well, let's open up DinoJet, uh, WinPEP 7 in this case. We're going to look at two dyno plots, green line and blue line. This is the same car. This is Little Joe's 2.4 liter Evo 8. To give you an idea of what we were dealing with for a power plant, it was a true 9 to 1 compression 2.4 liter. It was a long rod motor. It had an Eagle crank. It had S2 cams. It had a Magnus. It was on E85. If you zoom in, you can see that one of these runs was on E98. That's not the difference in the power. The turbo kit was an old straight T4 ETS kit that was a little bit different because they they didn't always have three and a half inch downpipes as an option. So this particular kit did. The turbo was originally just an old Garrett 35R, but that got upgraded to a 3586. And Joe initially kept the housing that was on it, which was a 0 0.68 AR open T4. Now, as you can see, the power that that made over here, 664.49, 540 foot-pounds, and I couldn't have asked for a closer boost curve. Both of them are 36.1, and at peak power, essentially the same, 33.8, 34. So... Where we look at the difference is a very, very obvious 636 horsepower out the top, 7,700 RPM uh, is where the 081 is the blue line, where it had taken over. So we're seeing a difference of over 100 horsepower by going from the 68 to the 81. Most importantly, though, is down here at 4,500. Zero difference in spool. Now... This is a very common question is that, oh, I want a fast spooling turbo. I'm going to put a small housing on it. What housing should I run? Well, it's not always a case of how small you should run. It's a case of what should you run for the combination you have. Nowadays, we rely heavily on T4 divided housings for twin scroll. We use the various motorsport style V-band inlet, V-band outlet housings that work great for spool and really I can't say enough about them. Spool's better, flow is better. Just in general, those those turbine housings work tremendously better. So we can see in this instance on this big motor on ethanol, really going small was the wrong direction. All it did was kill power. You can only imagine what the EMAP must have been up here. This was before I was keeping track of it. This is January of 2013, so over eight years ago now, but it made a tremendous difference getting away from the 68 to the 81. And difference between shifts was very, very minimal. Now we're going to swap to another test that we did. This might be a little bit more 
relatable to most of you. This is a stock 2 liter Evo 8. This has S1 camshafts. It has an HTA 3076 on it, V-band in, V-band out. It was a 082. The car was mostly used for road racing, but the owner wanted a pump gas map for tooling around. We can see that that made 443, 370. 26.6 pounds. I used to tune a little more aggressively, but this one didn't have electronic boost control or ECU based boost control. So I had to spike it to get the 25 out the top. Now keep in mind, this is a 082. Not very big really when we consider 30R wheels. He wanted it swapped to a 63 to be able to get more response on the road course. And because he used pump gas, he didn't have the advantage of ethanol for its ability to generate spool. He didn't have my VEC because it's an Evo 8. But look what happens when we drop to the 63 housing. No other changes. Does it spool faster? Sure. We can see that right here. 4,200. We've gone from 18 pounds to 23 pounds. Maybe if we back up just a little bit here. 4160, it was really on the whip hard on the 82 housing, but 15 to 23, so 8 pounds difference. But look at the difference in torque. 227 to 264. In that 8 pounds of boost, it only picked up 40 foot-pounds. But as soon as it spooled, the bigger housing with lower back pressure continued to make better power. Basically everywhere. At 5500, it's up 28 horsepower. Timing was low to help keep it happy and on the road course, but even out the top, identical boost. And yeah, nine horsepower, 11 horsepower more on the bigger housing. But it would be very curious to see what the back pressure difference was. How much of a change was that truly? We'll have to get it back on the dyno. This one goes back to 2011 and 2012. So we haven't, we haven't had it on the dyno in a while. But as you can see, that little bit of AR change was really inconsequential below 4,500. Now, a better option for this particular car, if it had been maybe more researched at the time, maybe a T4 divided twin scroll, maybe just doing a completely different turbo would have been a better option. I know that the owner does like it on the 63. He feels that it makes a big difference where he's using the car because he does get down to 3,500 RPM. So any torque that he can get there is going to help him. But maybe from the drag racer perspective or, you know, the systems analysis, it wasn't necessarily the best combo. Like I said, we'll have to get it on the dyno, instrument the car, get some true back pressure data to see where it is now. Anyway, that sums up this video. If this is content that you think you want to see more of, please consider pressing the like button, subscribing. If you do subscribe, press the bell for notifications as new videos are added. I've been busy in the background doing things, so I haven't had a bunch of time to dedicate to the channel, but I do appreciate you guys still continuing to watch and subscribe. We got three or four videos that are going to be coming out in the next week. I'm going to keep that up for as long as I can. When we get to Texas 2K, I'm going to do daily up, update videos. You might get three or four a day. It's not going to be as cool as the live view, but you're going to see in the pits. And like I said, I'm going to try to get some, some interviews with my friends, people that don't get too much time on camera, but they have some very interesting cars nevertheless. I always look at it kind of like it's a family reunion of the race world, that and World Cup, two of my favorite races every year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care. We'll talk to you later.